Gary was the ideal single parent. He had it all worked out. He and his son Eric got up at the same time every day, and Gary would pack their lunches while Eric poured two bowls of cereal. They'd eat together before loading up in the car. Gary would drop Eric off at school on his way to work and pick him up when his shift ended at 3. Every now and then, Gary would have to respond to a call or file a report that made him run a little late, but the system generally worked out. Gary would occasionally bring the police cruiser to the school to get his son and bring him back to the station while he finished up. Fortunately, Eric's kindergarten class was still young enough to think that was cool instead of branding the boy as a narc, which would undoubtedly be his label by the time he reached junior high. Gary's lieutenant encouraged the uniform trips to the school. It was his idea that exposing kids to police officers in positive situations would give them a better impression of cops as they grew up. He also thought it was good for his officers to do something uplifting from time to time. On one particular day, Gary opted to swing by the school in his patrol car just for that reason. He'd just finished up one of the ugliest reports he'd ever had to file, and he needed to see some little smiles before he went home. He'd been the first on the scene after a 911 call came in from a little boy. A kid just a little younger than his own son, that his daddy had hurt his mommy. The line got disconnected just after the kid blurted out a partial address. It took some time for Gary to determine where the call came from. Unfortunately, it may have taken too much time. When he arrived at the home, he found an open door and no one inside. Gary, ignoring protocol and hoping backup wasn't too far away, stepped into the house. The living room was in chaotic disarray. Picture frames lay broken on the floor amidst shattered glass and pillow stuffing. On the opposite end of the room, on the right side, was a threshold. The living room carpet ended there and kitchen tiles took its place. The edge of the carpet along those tiles was stained red. Proceeding into the kitchen, Gary found that someone had indeed hurt the child's mommy. She lay on her side in the blood, staring up at him with wide, vacant eyes. He found no life behind those eyes. Backup arrived and Gary searched the house with the other officers, but the husband and child were nowhere to be found. Officers were all in the basement when they heard the hinges squeal upstairs. They charged up just in time to see the husband flee out the back door. He was covered in red from head to toe. The officers pursued the man and drew their guns on him when he reached the tree line behind the house. Stop with your hands in the air, Gary commanded. The man partially obeyed and froze in place with one hand above his head. The other he held tightly to his chest as he slowly turned to face the officers. Drop the knife, Gary shouted as the dripping weapon came into view. This time the man did not heed the order. As they edged closer to him, he brought the blade up to his throat. You're too late. They're free now, the man snarled. Before any of the officers could stop him, he slid the knife from one ear to the other, splitting the skin of his neck open and bathing himself in a fresh coat of blood. After an extensive search, the police never located the child who called. After picking up Eric from school, Gary decided to unwind with a cold beer and some mindless television. He opted for one of those reality shows that preys on the mentally unstable for entertainment. Not his usual choice, but it was not a usual day. From Eric's room, he heard the hummed tune of the farmer in the dell. He smiled in appreciation of his son's innocence and prayed the child would never have to see the things he did. The father takes the knife. The father takes the knife. Hi ho, the dairy ho, the father takes the knife. Gary's mouth became dry as he heard the words being sung by the high little voice. Did his son just forget the words? Had some other kid at school taught him that dark version of the nursery rhyme? He sticks it in the wife. He sticks it in the wife. Feeling like he might vomit, Gary got off the couch. What kind of kid would teach his son such a thing? He walked over to his son's room and pushed open the door. No one was inside. Just then, the back door, the one that led out to the yard, opened, and Eric entered the house. When Gary had tuned out to try and forget the things he'd seen, he forgot Eric had gone outside to play. He'd never been in his room at all. 